This is a special presentation of the Thai Cats Audio Network. Coverage of the Canadian Football Hall of Fame classes of 2020 and 2021 induction ceremonies. And we are joined now on the Thai Cat Audio Network by the one and only Henry Burris. What's up, my brother? Hey, man. For me, it's an honor to be on with the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Andy Fantuz. Thanks for having me on, big man. <laughs> Come on, stop it. You're... So, Hank, how does it feel? You're going into the Canadian Football Hall of Fame. I mean, I know you got inducted a couple of years ago, but it's happening in person this week. How does it feel? You know what? I mean, when I first found out about it, you know, of course, during the pandemic in 2020, um, thought because you know, my wife, Nicole, she she set up the whole stage, her and Damon, and, and, and of course, uh, you know, the members to be uh, the committee who makes the decision, you know, with the Hall of Fame. I had no idea. I mean, you know, again, in my heart, I had, I had a good feeling that I'm hoping that, you know, things could add up the culmination and, and, and I guess the, the entire work's coming together. I was hoping that, you know, it could all pay off in the end, but to learn about it. And now here we are counting down the moments and days to when it's going to be an actual reality. I don't think right now the emotions have hit me like it will, you know, once, you know, we get, uh, you know, to the, to the, the Friday evening event and, and, you know, I'm up on the stage and my parents and everybody's there and I'm actually receiving my jacket and, and seeing that ugly bust line. And, and uh, I think those are going to be the moments where it really hits me that, that, you know, look at what this all added up to. And I'm truly thankful for it. And I can't wait. Oh, no doubt, man. I'm so happy that uh, everybody, everybody special, uh, is going to be there to support you. Um, I mean, you talk about your work and let's just like, look at it for a sec here. 18 seasons, 18 CFL seasons, plus a couple NFL seasons, a minor stint in NFL Europe. Like th that's, that's incredible. 277 regular season games, 17 playoff games, four different teams, two <laughs> CFL most outstanding players, three Grey Cups, Jeez. two Grey Cup MOPs. Do I keep going? I mean, like, <laughs> I, got, I got pages and pages of stats. 4,289 4, completions, 50, almost 58,000 yards. Oh, gosh. <laughs> touchdowns. Plus, you got to add in another 5,300 rushing touchdowns. I mean, like, of course, your work speaks for itself. And – more importantly than those stats, my favorite thing about you is, is what you bring just as a team member on and off the field. T talk about your, your CFL days, so just, I guess, in a, in a over in like a high level view, and then we'll dive in a bit. I mean, first of all, I mean, before I even get into that, I mean, just to hear you say that, I mean, for me, that, that's the most important part of, of my focus with each and every game, because, you know, I mean, even like the approach to business, people always say, successful companies also have great people who focus on being successful. And, and to hear you say that a man who's been very successful in pretty much everything you've done, I mean, whether it's been a player, you know, an entrepreneur, uh, you know, community leader, I mean, you know, for you to see that me, I'm truly humbled and honored by that. And, but that's something I always wanted to bring, you know, to the facility each and every day, you know, as one of the leaders on the teams that I played on, you know, to me, that's where it started establishing the culture each and every place that we went. Cause I mean, let's just say, you know, you know, you look at when you and I came to Hamilton as you know, opposed to, you know, when I went to Ottawa or when I went to Calgary, you know, those teams are all coming off of losing season, winning three to four games uh, per team. And, you know, following that next season, you know, we were either in the playoffs or we were battling for a playoff spot, but our offenses were always some of the tops in the league, especially from the passing side and points side as well. We made sure we went out there, created the culture, and we competed our butts off and gave it our all for our fans, not only on the field, but off the field. But, man, to hear those numbers in the end, you know, to have the amazing teammates I've had, like yourself, to Brad Sinopoli, you know, to the Allen Pitts of the world, to the number of great players I had in Saskatchewan, the Eric Gullifords, the Dan Farthings. I mean, I'm truly humbled and thankful for so many great people. And even, you know, Greg Ellingson, a guy who both of us were able to play with his teammates, and Bakari Grant, I mean, Gosh, I mean, the, the list goes on and on and on. And, and, and without, without guys like yourself and all the great guys that we had on our team, you know, it wouldn't have been possible. Well, you, 
that the mark of a true leader you come you come on and you're talking about me and, I, and it's <laughs> but i could say all those things but even on a higher level about you about the 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 impact in the community you know the motivational speaking the uh the in just being entrenched you and your family in whatever community you were playing in and really giving giving your all to that community uh, as well as to the organization so just a, a true leader you talked about um uh some of the players you played with so you know looking up my stats here uh you got your first shot when a couple of familiar names to the CFL got injured, uh, meaning Jeff Garcia and Dave Dickinson, a couple of legends of the CFL. And you got your shot. I was in your second year, I believe. And uh, so tell us about what it was like coming to the CFL after playing for Temple and uh, and how, how those first couple of years were until you got your shot for any you know young quarterbacks listening here. Uh, to me, to me, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Just to be in that winning culture that Wally Bono and company had had created in Calgary, because unfortunately for me, I'd only been a part of five wins in four years at Temple, you know, prior to that moment. <laughs> <laughs> and so, trust me, I was hungry to be in a place that that could win. And and uh, and Calgary changed changed my life. I mean, Calgary provided me the opportunity to know the proper ingredients that you need to have a successful team year in and year out. And and that's why Wally Bono is the all-time leader when it comes to wins as a head coach in the Canadian Football League. And, I mean, he eclipsed some of the best names ever, the Don Matthews, the, the Bud Grants, and, you know, even a guy that's going to be going in the Hall of Fame as far as, uh, you know, with, you know the up to, with the upcoming induction, you know, the class of 21 and Marv Levy, you know, one of the greatest coaches to ever coach in all of football. But you can put Wally up there head-to-head -head and he'll go – toe for toe, blow for blow with each and every one of those guys. And, and uh, I've always heard the term mentioned that it's hard to know success if you can't experience it. And I was able to experience it firsthand, you know, being there with Jeff Garcia and, and you know, Dave Spungis and, and, and Rocco Romano, a Hamilton, a Hamilton native. I mean, so many great players on that team, the Fred Childresses will be going in this upcoming uh, as far as induction class as well. So to be able to play with those guys taught me what it would take to become a professional athlete and to be the best that you can be and have a long, outstanding career. But to be behind Jeff and Dave, and, you know, finally getting my opportunity, all the knowledge that they passed on to me once I got in there and I was able to use my legs to run scared as I could, <laughs> as fast as I could running scared, I was able to use all the things that I was taught by George Cortez to help make me a successful quarterback by taking good care of the football, taking what the defense gives you, understand the reads, and get it to the guys who are wearing the right color jerseys. And so, you know, I mean, I was truly thankful. And I knew just with those moments, being able to have that success, you know, gave me pretty much the blueprint of what it would take to have a long, successful career. But the number one thing I had to do was, you know, stay manageable on the field by being present and taking care of my body. And those are things that I learned, you know, throughout my career. Oh, that's amazing. That, that list of names is, is just epic. We're, we're talking with Canadian Football Hall of Fame 2020 inductee Henry Burris. And uh, you, you mentioned your time at Temple. Let's let's back it up a little bit here. Um, you know, you only won a, a couple games. I remember when we used to when we used to ride the bus to uh, Ron Joyce Stadium when Tim Hortons Field was being being built uh all the new rookies that would come that would be one of the you know the, one of the trivia questions that they would all have to do three trivia questions and one of them was always over under for the amount of wins henry burris had through his entire college career <laughs> which by the way was good for second all-time passing yards in the big east yeah <laughs> only, only a handful of wins <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. And that's where you met your wife, though, most importantly. Hey, 100 percent. And, you know, it just shows that we had to throw the ball a lot to try to win games. That's, you know, that's the reason why I was able to put up so many numbers. But, <laughs> but I always knew inside my number one reason in college was to show the ability that I had. But I always felt I was going to meet my wife there. And what do you know? Here it is a reality now, with Nicole. <laughs> you and me both, my friend. I met Amanda at Western and uh, and football is secondary to all that. So Amen. how? how how is your family? How are you guys doing? You know what? The boys are 16 to 13 now, and they're both in school in Chicago. And you know what? I mean, this is their first year, complete year, this past year as far as in school, both academically, athletically. They both are soaring, man. And, uh, you know, to get down here and, and now to be pushed the way they've been as far as in their respective sports, our minds now 
you know, a baby fan twos, you know, playing wide receiver and, and, and on the football field. And he's actually got a chance to start this upcoming year and, uh, and also uh, playing basketball. And he's actually doing a, one heck of a job, uh, you know, playing AAU and also high school ball at Stevenson high school. And, and, uh, and uh, Barron, I mean, Barron's, he's soaring at all heights. I mean, he's one of the best soccer players in the area now. Uh, he's actually going to transition to playing quarterback, and he's killing it on the basketball court as well. So, but to see the fact that, you know, he learned French as his original language, and now he's transitioning as far as towards learning English as his primary language, but he's maintaining the French status as well. But, you know, just to see the kids soaring and taking those next steps in the right direction and their growth both mentally and physically, I mean, as a father, I'm, I'm so proud, but I have to give all thanks to Nicole. Because again, I've been on the road working all the time, and she's been holding the fort down. And, uh, you know, the team that we have, is, 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 it's been outstanding, and I'm thankful and blessed that, that I have her as my wife to lead, to lead the pack. No doubt. No doubt. Well said. And uh, uh, I guess they're following, the kids are following in the father's footsteps. You, you grew up in Spiro, Oklahoma. And went to Spiro High School and had four varsity letters, played football, track, basketball, and baseball at the most elite level. Um, do you think that playing multiple sports helped you uh, have the success in football that you had? Uh, what, what advice would you give to, you know, someone multi-talented going into high school? You know what, Andy, and and and, I, and that's so. I'm glad you asked that question because I mean, so many parents are single-minded with their kids right now. I mean, given their kids only singular sporting experiences, you know, if I wasn't a point guard in basketball, I wouldn't have understood how to orchestrate and lead the team on the field as a quarterback, and vice versa. Because sporting technology and sporting experience and empowerment and education, it, it's 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 cross-sport learning as far as how things take place and. You know, for me, parents who only keep their kids in one sport, they're, they're ruining their life skills as far as the opportunity to experience so many different things. I've never heard of a family just wanting to travel to one place their entire life. But if you only give your kids an opportunity just to experience one sport their entire life, how can you call that an experience? I mean, to me, you should be able to dip your hands in every cookie jar and experience what it's like and then make a decision at the end. Because this would be my first year. This past year was the first year my son played football. Yes, it didn't start off as strong as he wanted to, but look at him. He's going to be probably one of the starting wide receivers in year two. Why? Because he played hockey, he played basketball, he played soccer, and now all those different experiences are starting to, to benefit him now playing his second year both in football and in basketball. But I also have to say, too, my wife, Nicole, she was recently inducted in the Temple Sports Hall of Fame. Uh, yeah, and, and congratulations. So <laughs> yeah, this last year in 21, so to have her – and to have those genes is very important too, you know what I mean? And, and I'm super thankful for that. But yes, I would tell each and every parent, don't hold your kids back from experiencing all the values of sport because every sport has a reason in their life and it's going to help multiply just, just their abilities in the one sport that they truly love just by experiencing something different. I couldn't agree more. You heard it from the legend himself, Henry Burris. Um, so we're returning to Hamilton for the induction and a place, you know, well, you would join me for the final season of Ivor win to, in 2012. Uh, you led the league in passing 5,367 yards, touchdowns, 43 touchdowns, 104.4 passer rating. Those are all career highs for you. Unfortunately, we didn't get to where we wanted to get that year, but um, you had some good years. Like you said, we came, came to a struggling organization. You had a, a strong passing year and were able to turn around. And then the following year made it to the, all the way to the Grey Cup uh, into 2013. You know, you, you've had a, a lot of adversity in your career. So you, you got, uh, for one reason or another, maybe got bumped on the depth chart, had a little injuries, had to make some moves, uh, moving to a new team but always, always uh, seem to thrive. How did you, how did you kind of overcome adversity in football so many times, time, time after time? Well, it just seemed that, you know, even from high school, you know, people always focused on more of what I could not do than the things that you uh, were able to do and the things that you had accomplished. And you know, it seemed like when you made a good play, it was always expected, but when you didn't make a good play, it was like, okay, that's the end. That's the beginning of the end for that, that player. And, and, uh, you know, for me, it's like when those things happen, people were trying to figure out a way to always get rid of you. I always say that the game of professional sports is the beginning of the end. They're always trying to find a reason to create the end more so than, 
you know, say that it's the beginning. And uh, I experienced that, it seemed like, year in and year out. Because, you know, after Calgary got rid of me and traded me uh, to Hamilton, you know, I think they felt that I was going to go to Hamilton and things are just going to die out. Because, okay, let, let's be real, ha Hamilton was known there for a bit as a place where quarterbacks' careers go to die. And But I knew the fact when they signed yourself and a number of the guys that they signed, you know, o uh, Aria Jones, uh, Bakari Grant, all the great players that we played along with, and, and the fact that they brought that type of team together with, with big Pete Dykowski and, and, Mar and, and, and Marwan uh -huh. Hage and, and, and all the great players that we had on that team. I mean, we had a solid group of guys and we were all after respect. And it seemed like we were all out there playing to not only win respect personally, but to do it as a team because we knew what we were capable of doing. And you know, the fact that we were able to go to that great cup in 2013 when nobody gave us a chance to make it, you know, they said, oh, they can't beat Toronto. We went there and smacked those boys. And, and, uh, but the thing was for us, it was all about going out there and proving the doubters wrong. But if you ever watch like the 30 for 30 with, with Michael Jordan, and the Chicago bulls and, and the last dance, and even the great stories about the Tom Brady's, the Wayne Gretzky's, these guys always found a way to play with a chip on their shoulder. They always love to hear doubters say that you don't think I can, well, watch me. Well, that's the true heart of every champion. If you don't think we can do it, you just take a seat, grab some popcorn, and enjoy the show. And that's exactly what guys like yourself, myself, Tim O'Neill, all the great players that we play with there in Hamilton, we were able to get done. Just unfortunately, we didn't get to finish the job. But in the end, you know, I was able to, you know, be a part of a number of different occasions to help shut doubters up. But it's all about, in the end, never let people create your story for you. You find a way to create it yourself. Always keep the power of working hard in your hands and everything will end exactly the way that you want it to. Oh, just legendary. I still got my picture up there of uh, me, you, and OJ. Yeah. All, uh, <laughs> from that year. Uh, we had some fun, huh? Oh, man. We had well, some great teams, great teammates. On and off the field. But one thing I always admired about you is just your, your, your contagious energy. Oh, no matter how bad things are going or even if, if they're going well of course it's easy to be you know to be cheery and be positive but whether you're talking to you know the the training staff or or the the fan the last fan at the game or uh or the media like you always come and got your smiling hank face you got your you, you know your personality and it's just uh uh one <laughs> I loved, I loved how you, you would be you like at the time, I think you were the oldest guy on the team, like <laughs> no offense, just facts, probably in the best shape of anyone on the team too. Yeah. This guy is like ripped. He's I was competing against ripped. you, 40, man. 47 years old, probably still got it. Uh, but you would be leading the, leading the pregame speech and just going nuts and, and, and DJ in the locker room. I mean, oh boy. It, was, did you enjoy that part of the game about, uh, you know, keeping was that, that help keep you young or just involved or I mean, you don't, you don't care. You're just doing you. Well, you know what? I mean, to me, it was all about what the locker room, I mean, locker room was the most important sanctuary uh, for our team. I mean, you know, if you walk into a, I've been in inside of office spaces and, 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 and team locker rooms and you can all of a sudden feel the elephant in the room. Well, I never wanted you to feel that on our team. And then and number one thing I was just being myself because for me, I, I'm always about if you're doing something and you're not having fun, then why are you doing it? And I was like, I'm going to have fun regardless, but I'm going to do it with my teammates because I'm nothing by myself. I'm nothing without my teammates. And I wanted to make sure I found a way to get to know each and every teammate, find out what everybody liked and, or enjoyed. But on, the, on our teams that we had, people love music. People love to enjoy themselves together, play cards, dance, act crazy when it was the all time, because that allowed us to just let down our guard and just be ourselves and and that's what brought our teams that much closer together. We got to know each other's families, stories about the kids, stories about their childhood, as far as growing up, whether it was good or bad. We were able to come around and encompass and embody one another. And that's the reason why we went out there and played and laid it all in the field for each other. And whenever guys got hurt, we felt like we all were injured. And that's why we all went out there and played together for each other. Because at the end of the day, uh, when the season was over, it's not the fact that it was our, it was our last game. It was the fact that it was going to be our last time dancing in the locker room, having a good time, playing fantasy football, doing all those great things and who had the bragging rights and, and who won this team uh, bet or whatever. But, you know, it was those moments that we'll carry with us forever. And that's why I'm so thankful that, you know, we had the, the type of locker rooms that we had because everybody was involved as far as in creating the good times. 
Well, you certainly taught me a lot and picked and picked me up uh, uh, very often, time and time again, whenever I was feeling a little in the dumps. So I appreciate that. Um, so you had epic, really, really uh, successful careers in four, with four different teams or successful stints with four different teams, but the most recent, and uh, some people might not know. So you go to, you left Hamilton, you go to Ottawa, two and 16 your first year, uh, first year of the franchise. And then second year, MOP season, you lead the team all the way to the Grey Cup, um, just come up a little bit short. And then the following year, you're kind of up and down season with in some injuries in 2016, but you get to the Grey Cup game, you get a knee injury in warmups, and you go out there and just ball your, you know what off, <laughs> end up beating your old team in overtime, 39-33 victory against Calgary, win the Great Cup MVP. Two days later, you're in crutches, like, I, and you, you might need surgery. I mean, I could just see the emo. I was in crutches too, by the way, on <laughs> that, that game because yeah. <laughs> I, I had uh, an injury. But anyways, that doesn't matter. Uh, I could see the emotion just just coming through your skin with your family there and how special was it to finish your career like that on that note with all that, that you know just people might not even know that that happened like that's just, just yeah. crazy that's crazy it's a movie I think, if you, I think if you could like you mentioned you could put a movie or a book together I think that final season was definitely it in a nutshell because I mean, to deal with a broken finger and, you know, one that's, I always said, don't, don't straighten it. Just leave it where it is right there. Cause that gives me great memories. You know what I mean? And, and, uh, but just to deal with that. And, and like you said, the naysayers came out of the trees, you know, just growing away, you know, talk, Oh, you can't do what he's done. And, you know, playing with a, a finger that doesn't feel the same. You can't feel, you can't squeeze the ball and you're trying to, uh, you know, adjust things to, to your playing style and it just didn't work. And, and of course, bring in the future and Trevor Harris. And, you know, he's the guy you're, you're doing your best as you can to support him. But, you know, as a player who's proud of the things that, you know, you bring to the table and you still know that it's your team and the way this team's going to be successful is you have to get right. I mean, you know, it was a tough year, you know, to battle with, you know, the, the on and off the, well, more so the off the field noise that the media was creating. But at the end of the day, I said, hey, we just went to the Grey Cup and didn't, it wasn't either, you know, the defending MOP of the league. And a number of guys would tell me, oh, like, hey, you're still the MOP. Now go out there and play like it. And I just got the attitude to where I said, I'm going to focus on getting myself the best that I can be. And each and every day I'm at practice, I'm going to go out there and prove why I am the leader of this team still. And I did just that. I focused on the silver linings of everything and focused on continuing to build. And that's why I always tell people, keep building always. Because regardless of what's going on in your life, you still have opportunity to do special things. And to me, that final season just proved that. And, and we got into a, a zone at the end of that season. You know, we were averaging 31 points a game, and we were averaging almost 360 yards passing a game down the stretch that year. And, and you know, we just got into a zone because in the CFL, if you can't score over 30 points, when it matters the most, it's hard to win, especially winning championships. And once we got into that zone and we were still that team that played in the Grey Cup in 2015, we knew the sky was the limit. And even when we came up against Calgary, we were like, all right, we weren't our full at full steam and we tied Calgary, should have beat them in Ottawa. And we ended up tying them. And then Calgary late in the game in, in Calgary scored a couple of touchdowns and ended up beating us late in the game. But we knew we could beat that team now at full strength. And that's exactly how we entered that game. We actually went in knowing we were the favorites because we were like, hey, we were at two straight Grey Cups, not Calgary. So regardless of what they did in the regular season, this is the most important season and we're going to prove it in this game. And that's exactly how we went out there and we played and to have my parents and everybody there knowing it was going to be my last game, because trust me, I took some hits and I was like, all right, the body can't take any more of those. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but I knew it was my last game and to be able to walk off stage at that type of moment, to be able to experience that and still be able to hit replay and, and shed tears at the end of that game, man, was a dream come true. Yeah, that was, that was amazing, man. And then you went on to, uh, you know, on to the next thing, next chapter of your life. You joined the, the CTV Morning Live show in Ottawa. Um, you joined the TSN in the broadcasting world. And then you got the, uh, got the nod to go to Chicago for an internship as a, as a coach. And so tell us, what are you doing now? 
I mean, well, I'm Jacksonville. With ja- yeah. Yeah. I'm with Jacksonville now, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, Matt Nagy, the head coach with the bears and Ryan Pace, uh, you know, they were relieved of their duties and, and then came Matt Eberflus and Ryan Poles being the new GM head coach combo in Chicago. And, and uh, pretty much the entire staff got let go. I was let go towards the end of February, just before the combine. And, and, uh, but it gave me three weeks to spend time with my family. And then all of a sudden, one, it just seemed like one day my phone just kept ringing. The Dallas Cowboys called me, and I talked to a couple of guys with the Cowboys, uh, you know, Harold Nash, who's now the, the head strength conditioning coach who played for the Montreal Alouettes for a number of years, and also Rob Davis, who was a former uh, Baltimore Stallion long snapper who I was teammates with with the Green Bay Packers. He's now the assistant head coach for the Dallas Cowboys. I'm talking to him, th- those guys, and all of a sudden I hang up and I see a text from Doug Peterson, and he said, hey, man, you're coming to Jacksonville. I need you to get down here. We need some help in the quarterback room. And he's like, you had a great career. You can help Trevor. And I was like, perfect. And so, you know, that's kind of how things uh, all came together, but creating those relationships. And here I am now and, you know, listening to some great friends that gave me fantastic advice. They said, this is an opportunity like no other. You know, there's a need for more coaches who experience the position and you're that guy, you know, you have the mentality, you have the approach of you loving to give back, especially to kids and make them better men. Like just take all that that you've learned over the number of years and bring it with you to the NFL and you'll be successful. And now I'm able to learn some, from some of the best being with Doug, a Super Bowl winning you know, quarterback and also a coach and a number of guys who've had nothing but success on the offensive side. I'm learning under them because I do need to learn before I'm thrusted into that situation. So I'm taking my time going through the process. And man, it's been one awesome process as far as learning you know, the different implementations from Chicago and now with Doug and company uh, here in Jacksonville. I know you bring a lot of value to wherever you go. So that's, uh, they're lucky to have you, but it's, it's nice that you're, you know, that you just appreciate every opportunity and you're just there to learn. And uh, that's the same approach I take in, in my ventures. Can you tell me, uh, or tell the fans, I guess, what's a, you know, a career highlight of yours or yeah. What's a career highlight from the CFL? Wow. Wow. I mean, I mean, of course, you know, starting in 2008, you know, winning the great cup, you know, in Montreal, over 70,000 people playing Montreal in Montreal against, you know, Anthony Calvillo, great to ever play that game. And you know, it was like two super teams on the field that night. And, you know, to have Jermaine Copeland, Nick Lewis, of course, he's going in the Hall of Fame and to have head coach John Huffnagel in his first year and getting that win. And to me, Huffnagel gave to me the greatest speech of all time. You know, Ben, we got him right where we want him. You know what I mean? <laughs> and just the way he said it, of course, while he's saying that, I'm in the bathroom throwing up. And, <laughs> you know, and, and of course I hear him, I hear the guys go wild and they're going, Hey, and I'm going, Ugh, you know, so, so it was a pretty sweet moment, but uh, it got me pumped up, all, 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 you know, just the emotions of the game, but, you know, just the times of being able to just see communities go crazy, you know what I mean? To see Ottawa, we burst the bubble for 40 years, just to see how the celebration was with the party and parade up there. Uh, you know, to me, I think a, a big moment, uh, for me, also was was in Hamilton, like the last game at Ivor win, you know, for us to get that big victory uh, in that game and to do it in the fashion that we did, putting up over thirty points in that game. You caught, I think, you caught a couple of scores in that game, <laughs> if I'm correct, against Winnipeg, and and uh, you know, you went off, and uh, as well as a number of our guys, Dave Stalla, and all the guys who's uh, coming together, and, and and Avon Coburn and and Siobhan Walker. I mean, you know, we went after those guys in that game, and but there's so many great memories. I mean, it's hard for me to say one, but I mean, if, if it's probably the one, it would be the parade after the Grey Cup in Ottawa, because to see as much frustration as that city dealt with in football for such a long time, over 40 years, and just to be a part of such a special moment with so many special guys as far as on that team, I mean, it's pretty unreal to be able to experience that, and, and it's really hard to put into words. So that would definitely have to be the one of how it impacted the community more than anything else. Nice, nice. Any, any low, low lights? <laughs> hey, you want to share you know getting traded man that's tough <laughs> yeah <laughs> getting cut and all those things and somebody telling you somebody's better than you that's never fun to deal with but again you know it's a reality check for you and and it helps you like it, again, jordan said for the 26 times that he failed it allowed him to succeed so many more times and you know the same thing goes for myself the times that people told me i just wasn't good enough it allowed me to succeed that much more because it truly really allows you to focus on the things that you aren't doing as well. So, I mean, there are low moments, but to me, the L stands for lessons. And and to me, if you don't mm. if you don't take the lesson and learn, then you truly miss the opportunity to get the real picture. Because 
you learn from those things, it can truly build something special. Sam Walton went through it with his first store in Bentonville, Arkansas, to, to I mean, even Michael Jordan, who supposedly got cut from his ninth grade team. I mean, these guys took those learning moments and look at what they were able to create. So if they can do it, why not us? The L stands for lessons. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. So who are you going to be, uh, who are you going to be thinking about that, that can't be with you on this weekend uh, for this, uh, the Canadian Football Hall of Fame ceremony? Who, either dead or alive, who, uh, who cannot be with you that's going to be in your head? Well, I, you know, I always start with, you know, for me, my grandmother, who, of course, you know, my parents were working hard, working a nine to five, and I came home early from school. You know, she was always there to take me under her wing and, and just teach me, you know, the right things that were right from wrong. You know, she gave me the foundation along with my parents on how to live life and, and how to go about things. Uh, my high school football coach, uh, you know, his daughter's actually getting married that same week, this weekend, so he won't be able to make it. Um, you know, George Cortez, he won't be able to make it this weekend. Um, but there's so many great coaches and, and teammates that I play with that, that won't be there. But, you know, I'm looking forward to calling each and every guy or messaging each and every guy that I can and, and uh, that I have contacts with and saying, you know, you know I'm just going to text two words. Thank you. Because, you know, of all the great times that we had, whether it was from having a cold one and thanks Canada, I didn't drink before I came there, but you guys talked about <laughs> a beverage or two. But, you know, doing those little things like having a beer went so – it went, it went a long ways as far as in building relationships, not only relationships that were just all about us winning on the field, but relationships and friendships that last forever. And, uh, you know what I mean? To me, those small moments, you know, meant something bigger. And, uh, but really just all the coaches, you know, all the teammates that have come and gone that we've had over our years, and, but the people as far as, you know, personally, you know, like my coaches as a kid growing up and, and my parents and friends that were there for me as a young man and, told me don't get involved in that focus on this you know those are the people that I'm going to miss the most you know while I'm there on stage uh you know delivering a message to the crowd humble gracious thankful just very <laughs> very strong qualities from from a legend legend uh legendary CFL football player a father a husband a friend congratulations buddy I, yeah, I really, man, I Andy. really mean that. I you're can't wait guy. to see you. Um, I'm going to leave you with the final thought, thought, but we're really looking forward to seeing you at uh, Tim Hortons Field for the Great Cup Canadian Hall of Football Hall of Fame and the uh, at in the game against Calgary on Saturday. Final thoughts? Any message to the fans? Oski wee wee, Oski wow wow, holy <laughs> mackinac, tiger cats, eat them raw. <laughs> there it I is, folks. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> I love you, buddy. I can't wait to love see you, you and the family. And uh, yeah, safe travels. We'll see you soon. See you soon. Can't wait, brother. The Canadian Football Hall of Fame induction weekend coverage on the Thai Cats Audio Network.